Coming up on CMAL Channel 18 News, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un makes his first visit to the South. And I'll tell you how Iowa City fought back against sexual violence. We'll tell you all about Iowa's baseball roller coaster season. And we'll tell you about the NFL draft picks. All that and more coming up in sports. Find out if it is finally time to put those winter coats away when I give you the latest in weather. Sorry, all that and more coming up on this Friday morning edition of CMAL Channel 18 News. Don't go anywhere. It's all starting right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Michaela Hughes-Shaw. And I'm Hannah Webster. After 65 years of conflict between North and South Korea, the two countries officially ended the Korean War. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un crossed the border yesterday to pursue peace talks with South Korean leader Moon Jae-in. The historic meeting lasted for eight and a half hours. After the meeting, the two leaders embraced and planted a tree. The next steps to a peace deal are finding a way to involve China and the U.S., both of which were part of the original conflict. A jury has found actor Bill Cosby guilty of three counts of aggravated indecent assault. The 80-year-old comedian faces up to 10 years in prison for each account. The case centered around a former female employee that says Cosby sexually assaulted and drugged her. A sentencing date has not been scheduled for Cosby, but currently is out on bail. He is likely to serve his sentences simultaneously. As Sexual Assault Activism Month comes to an end, the discussion is lively as ever. Take Back the Night was held on the Pentecost earlier this week to march against sexual violence. I attended the rally to get the story. Shouting, signs, and support are the essential things you need for a march. Here at the University of Iowa, several organizations on campus come together for an event to bring awareness to sexual violence in hopes to show support to victims. Just make sure that victims know that they are cared for on campus and that they like still have a voice and that they are believed in just empowering victims to feel safe on campus. Take Back the Night is an international event with a mission of ending sexual, relationship, and domestic violence in all forms. Each year there are hundreds of events held in over 30 countries. Take Back the Night consists of a rally, a march, and a platform for people to stand in solidarity in support of sexual violence survivors. I'm here at the Pentecrest at the University of Iowa, where the campus and the community will come together to hear their voices. Organizations involved in Take Back the Night, such as the Domestic Violence Intervention Program, work hard to be there as a resource for affected people on campus. We deal with a lot of dating violence and we do have on-campus advocates as well um, for folks who are victims of intimate partner violence. As April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, it's never too late to get involved with organizations on campus and volunteer at RAC or DVIP to help end domestic violence. For more information on how Iowa honored Sexual Assault Awareness Month, contact Katie Ferrix at katie-ferrix.uiowa.edu. Well, if all goes well, the last snow of the season has finally melted. This will now allow gardeners to return to earning their green thumb. JT Ward is live in the newsroom to plant some knowledge in our heads about the gardening club. That's right, guys. Spring is finally here. Birds are chirping, the, war the air is warming, and the plants are finally growing. And it is that growing that has gardeners at the University of Iowa Gardening Club excited. It wouldn't be Gardening Club without a garden, and this one has one and more. With the rich diversity of plants ranging from colorful flowers to vegetables like potatoes and carrots, this garden has much to offer. The club, like its garden, has a vibrant vessel of volunteers. Volunteers like Hannah Zeta, who is a part of the club to better understand the issues facing our agriculture system. Our animal agriculture system is exploiting everyone around it. So it's exploiting the consumers in that they don't know what's being put into their bodies. It's exploiting the workers because they're not being paid well. It's exploiting the animals. Um, so I'm really interested in that and the reformation of that. And the Garden Club hopes to fight that corruption by teaching members how to do such a thing. Also, they are looking to teach avid and novice gardeners how to earn their green thumb. Back to you guys in the studio. 
Well, speaking of spring, I'm really hoping that this weather is here to stay. What about you? That's right, Michaela. Let's head over to the weather studio with Jimmy for more details. Thanks, guys. This whole week has been a treat, and yesterday certainly was sweet with the high temperature reaching a nice 69 degrees. This morning, the temperature is about 50 degrees, and the sun is shining. Later today, we'll see highs up around the 70 degree mark with the sun continuing to shine to make for a beautiful end of the week. Winds throughout the day will be gusting around 30 miles an hour, so be sure to hang on to your hats so they don't fly away. This evening, the winds will die down and the temps will drop to the 30s with clear skies. Temps won't be low enough to drag out those winter coats, but again, definitely don't forget your jackets. Let's take a look at the extended forecast to see what the weekend and the beginning of next week has in store. Saturday will cool off a little bit to the high 50s with more sunshine building up as the day goes on. Sunday, the temps will begin to climb from the mid 60s to the high 70s. On Tuesday, temperatures will continue to warm up throughout the day despite a cold front that is expected to take over in the morning. The cold front may bring in some thunderstorms with it, but these should not last as long as sunshine is expected to roll in for Tuesday afternoon. Thunderstorms will continue to fill the area on Wednesday as well. I'm almost confident winter won't pay us another visit as next week we'll see 60s and 70s across the board. That's it from me in the weather studio. Enjoy the sunshine and warm temperatures, Iowa City. Hannah and Michaela, back to you guys at the desk. The pedestrian mall improvements project is set to kick off Monday. This project is part of a downtown streetscape plan. The aim is to improve accessibility and infrastructure of the ped mall. The first phase is expected to be completed in the fall. The next phase of the project is construction on the stretch of College Street between Clinton and Lynn Street. This phase is expected to be finished in the fall of 2019. One popular chain restaurant in America plans to decrease business in the U.S. to expand globally. Subway plans to close 500 of its locations in the near future while opening up 1,000 restaurants internationally. Countries like the, I'm sorry, countries like Mexico, the U.K., and China and India. Uh, sub Subway is the largest chain restaurant in the world with 40,000 locations worldwide, surpassing McDonald's and Starbucks. Along with the expansion, Subway also has plans for a new concept store, loyalty program, and revitalization plan. Well, this is a big week in sports for the University of Iowa. Yeah, it is. Let's toss it over to Jasmine and Zach in the uh, sports studio to find out more. Thanks, guys. We have a lot of news in sports today, including baseball, tennis, and even a bike race at the University of Indiana. And we'll tell you all about the NFL draft last night, but first we will give you the news on Hawkeye baseball. The Iowa baseball team has had an up-and-down season so far, but they continue to give their all out on the field. A big test is coming this weekend as the top dogs in the Big Ten are coming to Iowa City. CMAL's Channel 18 sports reporter Jacob Gingrich has the story. The Iowa baseball team is about two-thirds of the way through their season, and the results have been mixed. Though the reigning Big Ten champs are 24-13 and 13 overall, they sit at just 7-6 and six in conference play, good for eighth place. A big series looms ahead this weekend, with Michigan coming to Iowa City, as the Wolverines are currently riding a 20-game win streak. Head coach Rick Heller is confident, but he sees plenty of room for improvement. You know, we, we didn't have a great weekend at Minnesota offensively. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, we saw really good pitching, so you got to tip your hat there. And, and, and it was a situation this past weekend where if you'd have told me that we had hold Minnesota, the, the leading offensive team in the league, to a 222 average for three games, we probably would have won two of the three. And, you know, it just didn't work out that way. With the Hawks at just over 500 in Big Ten play, you wouldn't expect them to be so confident. Still, they look forward to the challenge. We love playing for these type of moments, and they got to come see us. They got to come to Iowa City, play, play our game, not try to do too much. Don't let that win streak get to us, and just come out aggressive like we always do. I just look, um, I just look for a couple more guys throughout the order to get hot, and that'd be a great time to do it this weekend. And guys have been doing a good job, so I think we all feel like um, you know, we're really up for that challenge and looking forward to it. With the team sitting in eighth place in the Big Ten, a win or two against the top team in the conference would be huge. From Iowa City, I'm Jacob Gingrich. CMAL Channel 18 Sports. The Iowa Hawkeyes men's tennis team beat Northwestern in the opening round of the Big Team Tournament. The score was 4-2 on Thursday at the Hawkeye Tennis and Recreational Complex. Leading the team were 
players Jacob Jacoby, Kareem Aloff, and Josh Silverstein, who had all wins at the tournament. The Hawkeyes had doubled their points for the 22nd time this year. The 2018 NFL Draft kicked off last night with many players from around the country hoping to hear their name called. Two Hawkeyes were amongst the players waiting for that phone call from an NFL organization. Josh Jackson and James Daniels were projected first round picks according to Mel Kiper Jr. Pick by pick went, but no Hawkeye name was called. The draft continues tonight at six where the second and third rounds will take place. Jackson and Daniels along with many others, Hawkeyes hope to hear their names called soon. Moving away from Hawkeye sports, Indiana University held their little 500 bike race last weekend. Over 45,000 people were in attendance this year. Among them, our very own Henry Rimber with the story. It's the morning of the annual Little 500 bike race at the University of Indiana, a tradition that's been on the campus since 1949. Bikers from student organizations all over the campus, like the Delta Upsilon fraternity, have trained tirelessly in hopes that they qualify. And while the rest of the city sleeps, they are hard at work to make sure that they show out. I got put on to biking by my dad. He was always a huge biker. And ever since I was a little kid, I've just loved, um, you know, racing. And it's just always been like a part of my life as far back as I could remember. And the Little 500 is a tradition that's been going on in Indiana for decades. And there have been festivities and events happening all around campus just leading up to the race. But that being said, things just do not get as exciting as game day. Single speed Schwinn bikes with no brakes racing at an average of 23 miles per hour for 50 miles on a cinder racetrack, a sport that only the strongest of college athletes are capable of. It's a month of really difficult cardio and um, endurance training. Uh, it's obviously been a lot of hard work and um, you know I never would have thought myself capable of this originally, but now just being able to prove to myself that I could do this um, kind of, you know, makes me feel more confident in myself and I'm really um, fortunate in that. The Little 500 is every spring semester in April and I absolutely know where I'm going to be next year. From Bloomington, Indiana, this is Henry Wimber, CMAL Channel 18 News. The Iowa track and field team will be running at the Drake Relays this week on the famous Blue Oval. While there, they hope to win the Hy-Vee Cup. The cup goes to the team with the most points in the 4x1, the 4x4, the 4x8, the sprint medley, and the distant medley. The Iowa men's track team won the cup for the first time last year with 39 points. Director of track and field Joey Woody said, quote, we have some great relays, so it is going to be a fun weekend, end quote. That's all we have for you in the sports studio today. Be sure to tune in next week for updates on all things sports. Guys at the desk, back to you. For those who have royal baby fever, it looks like we finally have a name. Prince William and Kate Middleton welcomed their third child earlier this week, adding a baby brother to the family for their children, Charlotte and George. This morning it was announced the new prince will be named Louis Arthur Charles. The official title will be His Royal Highness Prince Louis of Cambridge. Prince Louis is now fit in line for the throne. That's all we have for you this morning on edition of CMAL Channel 18 News. Be sure to head over to CMALChannel18.com for all the latest news between Monday and Friday. For more Iowa City and campus news, be sure to pick up your print edition of CMAL News on Stands Now. For CMAL Channel 18 News, I'm Michaela Hughes-Shaw. And I'm Hannah Webster. Until next time, Iowa City.